We have Super Eagles Media Officer Tony Bitoye joining us via Skype. It's good to have you with us, Tony Bitoye. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Udoka and Ope. Thank yeah. you for the opportunity to be on your show. Let's talk about the Super Eagles now, and of course, the late coach, Stephen Keshi. What would you say, how would you um, describe the, the legend who, was, who passed on in 2016? I mean, you said it all. Um, he's a legend. Um, no two words to, to describe the impact that he made on Nigerian football. And um, I, I think he's perhaps the most influential Nigerian footballer of all time. Um, his impact while playing on the domestic scene, um, he played uh, for ACB of Lagos, uh, near Nigerian Bank, uh, and then moved to Cote d'Ivoire and then moved to Belgium, and then became um, the leader of a generation of players who played professional football in Belgium. I mean, they would stay in his house before they signed a professional contract. His house was like some maker of, um, of young stars, Nigerian footballers. And that led us to the generation of players who eventually uh, would qualify us for the World Cup in 1994. Um, was a leader of the team, a leader of leaders. Because when you look at the 94 squad, um, it's not an ordinary team. It's an assemblage of um, of leaders. Look at Austin Gavoin, you look at uh, J.J. Kocha, look at Samson Siasia, Sunday Ulisse, Peter Rufai, um, you look at Uchoke Chuku, Mona Lamunike, uh, you know, Rashidi Yekini, that is more than a team. Amokachi and all the rest, it was Mutu Adekoju. It was an assemblage of leaders, and uh, fittingly, Keshi was a leader of leaders. Um, un unbeatable in, in terms of what he was able to achieve on the pitch, the way he was able to inspire the team into achieving success, eventually winning the Nations Cup in 1994, mm -hmm. coming close on a number of occasions in 84, uh, 88, uh, coming uh, second, uh, although he didn't play in 1990, but he was there again in 1992. Uh, so he, he, he's, he's um, in a class of his own uh, as a player, he was a leader, very influential. Uh, and um, as a coach, uh, it's not a surprise that he was able to achieve the level of success he was able to uh, achieve. Winning the Nations Cup, becoming only the second uh, man uh, to win the Nations Cup as a captain and as a coach after the Egyptian legend uh, uh, Buhari. Um, and of course, the only African to qualify two teams for the World Cup, qualified Togo 2006. Unfortunately, he didn't lead Togo to that World Cup. Um, was part of the people that qualified us for the 2002 World Cup. Unfortunately, he didn't lead the team alongside uh, uh, Amadou Shaibu and uh, Joe Eriko. And then uh, in uh, 2013, 2014, qualified Nigeria. And thankfully, he was able to lead the team to the World Cup, and um, also the only African coach um, to have qualified for uh, the second round and the World Cup. So some people believe he achieved it through luck. Some people believe it was um, his tactical acumen. But whatever it is, he did it. He's made the record. He's the only African to have done it. And uh, we deserve to give him all the respect uh, and all the accolades that uh, come with achieving um, such a feat. So for me, um, Keshi is, uh, is, is in a different class. It's a pity he's no longer around with us. It would have been better to celebrate him alive. Exactly. Uh, but uh, he's no longer here. But uh, people say when you uh, live in the memories of those who love you and uh, the impact that you make on the lives of people is talked about all the time, then we can't really call you a dead person. Um, probably living in another realm. So, that for me uh, is uh, Stephen Okechuku Keshi. He's a fantastic man. I had the privilege of working with him briefly um, in 2015 uh, when he came back um, as Super Eagles coach. He's, yeah. he's, he's a fantastic man. He's a motivator. Um, he played to the highest level and uh, he shows in the kind of respect that he commands amongst the players. Indeed, um, it was a big boss. Indeed, it was a big boss. Yeah.
I was, I was going to ask you on your relationship with um, the late um, coach, but of course you said, you've said it all. But let's take it back to when Nigeria won the Nations Cup. Um, this was before you got on with the Super Eagles. How, what was your reaction? Did you ever believe that Nigeria had what it takes to win that Nations Cup or not? Uh, somehow. Um, somehow I had the belief that um, we could do something. Um, and uh, thankfully, um, I was close I mean, close to Stephen Keshi to a very good extent. Uh, in South Africa, we were always, always um, talking and chatting and discussing about the games. Unfortunately, um, I didn't get to the, South to the Nations Cup in South Africa. I was supposed to go for the final, but something happened. I wasn't able to go anymore. But I was always in touch, and we were always speaking. When it was rough at the beginning of the tournament, with a one-all draw with Burkina Faso, and then a goal, a one-all draw again with Zambia, and we were on the verge of um, of not qualifying. And the pressure that comes with it, you know what it takes, you know what it means for you to be the coach of the Super Eagles of Nigeria with um, close to 200 million Nigerians, all of them coaches, all of them knowing what you should do uh, from the comfort of their bedrooms, not on the on the pitch. Yeah. You know the amount of joy faced. So we were always in touch, and I somehow believed. He was confident in himself that things would turn around, and I'm happy at the end of the day um, that things turned around for the team and, uh, and for Stephen Keshi after um, the 2 0 win over Ethiopia, the victory over Cote d'Ivoire, and then the way we trashed Mali. I knew there was no stopping us. Mm. Um, and then, of course, for the World Cup, um, the build up to the World Cup, before the World Cup, remember in 2014, we had a chance early 2014. Before Keshi came, we had never qualified for the chance. Never. He was the first person to qualify us for the chance. Um, and then he took us to South Africa. Our team was the best team at the chance. We lost on penalties to Ghana in the semifinals uh, or one bronze. But that was the first time we were getting on the podium um, at the chance. Before Salisu Yusuf bettered that record uh, in 2018 in Morocco. Uh, so Keshi was a man of so many firsts, um, remarkable achievement as a coach, remarkable achievement as a player, charismatic personality. Uh, he was, he was uh, I mean, you cannot take anything away from him. He made his impact, not just on Nigerian football, on African football, made his impact on the world stage. Uh, became captain of all the clubs he played for in Europe, from Anderlecht to Strasbourg, everywhere he went. He was able to play through to becoming the captain, and I think it's a reflection of the leadership qualities that he had inborn in him because he became captain of Nigeria very early in his life, from as early as uh, 83, 84. He was captain of the national team, yeah. and he captained the national team for a long, long time, and he achieved a lot of success. So, Keshi, uh, the most influential footballer for me of all time, Nigerian footballer of all time, and the greatest African coach in terms of the success that he achieved up till now. Wow. Thank you very much for speaking with us uh, today. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Then enjoy the rest of your day and continue to stay safe. Yeah, thank you.